Yes. So, yeah. I'm always interested, Emma, in yes. how far a young journalist yeah, you come up today ha- yes. um, could actually get that break. Because, you know, for, for people like you who start out with a real job on a real paper, going freelance and having a blog, you know, is fine. And I wonder how many people nowadays are really making the break the other way from, from you know, being unknown, from just starting, starting from scratch. Yeah. I don't know. I, I wonder about this. I mean, I still think that there is a, a, a sufficiently a sufficient scarcity of talent that if you have the mater- good material, you will be able to badger an editor who can hire you into reading it and commissioning you. Um, and it took me six months to get my first job. I was I graduated from Teddy Hall and I moved back home and I sent my cuttings uh, around every single media organisation in Britain. And it, and it took and it took me six months to get a job at the Scotsman, which I then worked at for a couple of months before moving to The Guardian. And so, I, I mean, there are, I, I suppose there are, because newspapers are suffering so much financially at the moment, there, there's, there are less resources around. But I still think if you put together a good package and send it out, that, that, you, that you will get picked up. If you're good, you will get picked up in journalism. It's not like trying to get a Hollywood screenplay made, where there are factors so far out of your control that it's just never going to happen. Uh, I, th- I think talent still rises to the surface in, in, in journalism. Yes. Kind of following on from that, um, I I'm doing uh, stuff to do with like video games and digital games and stuff. Mm. Now, and one of the problems that the journalism particularly has there is that in your kind of economics metaphor, yeah. a lot of it seems to be all kind of flow and no stop. Right. There's lots of kind of Twitter and mm. bits about news, but there's not much kind of longer form, interesting pieces written with kind of more thought behind them. Yeah. And I find it quite frustrating. Um, because I think it leads to kind of a shallower discourse. Mm. And I wonder whether you think that the whole kind of blogging, Twitter thing means that especially younger journalists have to kind of create this sort of less deep content to get anywhere, like they're obliged to kind of create this constant flow of stuff just to get noticed and where that's about? No, well, I mean, the thing is that some of these distinctions, actually, when you sit down and look at them, don't hold up. Like, you know, if you looked at my output in the first five years of my career. I was, I was doing 100% trivial daily turnarounds for, for G2 at The Guardian. Absolutely no different to what I would be doing now with, with blogging. Um, and, and the same if you start out in the new, on the news desk, you're going to be sent out to do, you know, do, you know if you work in local newspapers, you're going to be sent to do the WI meeting, whatever. Um, I, I, actually, I actually don't think that there was this mystical golden age 15 years ago where, where we were all put on very big stories when we were 22. I mean, I think it actually, in, and in some ways it doesn't really matter what you're writing about when you start out. You're just trying to figure out how to organise the material in a way that does not bore your reader. Um, so I, I don't get too worried about, about triviality. And I think to be trivial is fine, frankly, a lot of the time. Um, as, as long as you can satisfy your own interest levels by doing something else on the side. Similar, really. Um, I teach at secondary school, and um, I run a school magazine. I'm trying to encourage the students to, to get involved with writing, and a lot of them are very enthusiastic, but don't know what to write. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was wondering whether you, for, for young writers who, who kind of have the, the, the skills but don't know what to focus on, do you think it's better for them to write from their own experience, right. or to write, take something at current event perhaps, and, and write about it? I think at that age they should probably not write about their own experience. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, it's tricky. I, I mean, because I think actually it's harder. I think why start with something that's harder? Because then you are because it's psychologically it's quite difficult, let alone technically, to write about yourself. In, unless unless they have an amazing facility for for, for um, first person writing. But I do think it's trickier to write about yourself. So so I would always send them out to try and do a disinterested, disinterested story about third person, or even just like um, interview, well like we did a supplement in The Guardian a while back on interviewing, on, on like family trees, like interviewing your relatives, I don't, you don't even have to leave your house particularly, I think you can just interview your relatives in a way that extracts uh, interesting information and try to present in a, in a straightforward manner. Um, yes, I would, I would always send them out to do something, to, to do something uh, not to do with themselves, because uh, apart from anything else then you, you, you cut down the risk of it just turning into a, a, a piece of appalling so solipsism. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I just wondered um, if you could uh, go into this a bit. It's psychologically difficult to write about yourself. Yeah. How did you uh, overcome that when you started your memoir? Therapy. <laughs> 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 um, 
Uh, well, uh, I don't. I, I can't even tell you now. I mean, I, I think I just, I just kept at it. Um, and I also, the thing is, I mean, everybody says this, and it sounds so, so pretentious. But when you are, when you are the vehicle for for the, the story in a in a memoir, you you have to create yourself as a, as a kind of character. So it's a slight alternative version of yourself. So so there is a, there is a distancing mechanism which helps with the psychological fear of exposing yourself too much and of also um, falling into exactly that category that I loathe, which is voyeurism. So I think if you come at it with an experience, with a, with a background in, in writing about other people, you, just, you try in as much as is possible, which is of course not wholly possible, to, to turn the kind of critical eye that you would on somebody else back on yourself and try and think of yourself almost as a, as a third person entity, which is why you need therapy. <laughs> <laughs>